10 Disturbing Truths of Chipotle. Do you know Chipotle? This famous Mexican grill, fast casual franchise is spread across the world and has earned people's love under their motto, food with integrity. But do you know what happens behind its closed doors? Get ready to find out, because in today's video, we'll be talking about just that. Welcome to Film Jumbo, and today we'll be telling you 10 disturbing truths about Chipotle Mexican Grill. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for more great content just like today's video. So let's get started with the first disturbing truth. First truth, they outsource their cooking. First of all, Chipotle doesn't do all of its own cooking. They outsource their cooking to a company that also does other fast food cooking for other companies. So despite their website saying that they do fresh cooking using classic culinary techniques, in fact, they don't even do any cooking at all. Two outside processing companies in Chicago, OSI and Miniat Holdings, braise the carnitas and the barbacoa, trim the steaks, cook the beans, and make the bases for the restaurant's green and red tomatillo salsas all according to the Chipotle specifications. However, ironically, their guac is all handmade. The person who makes said guacamole might just have the hardest job in the restaurant. Every freshly made batch guacamole means someone is mashing up to 140 avocados. So at least we have to give Chipotle points for that. Second, you can get free food if you're famous. When you're a celebrity, sometimes you can get away with some things other, less famous people can't. Life seems to be much easier for you when you have millions of followers on social media. And in Chipotle, there's the benefit of free food. Chipotle gives famous customers a free card that is good for free Chipotle for life. Although it is said that the card actually expires after one year, which is about the amount of time that most people are at the peak of their fame. A few famous people that have posted about their For Life cards, including Bryce Harper, who plays baseball for the Washington Nationals, and Steven Tyler, the lead singer of Aerosmith. Of course, this is a smarter move than it seems at first glance. When a celebrity talks or posts something about their Chipotle free card, other people, including other celebrities, will curiously try to get one for themselves. And so, spread the word about Chipotle and their free cards. By giving away their food for one year, they're saving themselves the cost of influencers' marketing. How does that sound? Third truth, their ingredient sources are ambiguous. It's not really clear cut where Chipotle gets their ingredients from. They claim that their meat is responsibly raised, and for that they have three requirements. First of all, their animals have to receive no added hormones, no antibiotics, ever, and were humanely raised. It's been found out, though, that when Chipotle can't meet its needs with their so-called responsibly raised meat, it outsources to the traditionally sourced meat coming from animals raised with growth hormones, antibiotics, and, you guessed it, inhumane conditions. In 2013, that came out to 7.8 million pounds of its beef, about 15% of all of its beef, and 88 million pounds of its chicken, less than 1% of its chicken, and all of the pork served fit their standards of responsibly raised. Chipotle's beef is bought from Meyer National Foods, which finishes feeding its cows in feedlots. So no, the beef isn't 100% grass-fed. The goal for most family farmers. Fourth truth, their ads are great, but also mostly fake. Sweat and blood and tears is in the soil. We've all probably seen at least one of Chipotle's ad campaigns, including their well-known Scarecrow featured in most of them. And truthfully, some of them are very well done and actually entertaining. Their ad campaigns tend to compare factory farming negatively against sustainable agriculture, which isn't that far away from the truth if you think about it. The problem is that Chipotle is only showing you an ad, not what's behind it. As we said in our previous entry, Chipotle relies mostly on conventionally raised meat, so it is actually sourcing from the same factory farms that their ads are criticizing. On top of that, some of their messages are actually fake. Their ads claim that their main competitors use genetically modified animals, which they don't, and that they don't use them themselves, which is obviously not true. Land prices right now for this county is $6,500 an acre. 
Fifth place, no Latinos in cultivating thought. Despite trying to cultivate thought, their campaign doesn't feature Latino or Mexican writers. In case you're not acquainted with it, the Cultivating Thought campaign commissioned original writings from 10 authors to print on its packaging. If you've ever eaten at Chipotle before, you will find that some of their bags feature some mystifying messages written by famous authors such as Malcolm Gladwell, Michael Lewis, and Toni Morrison. These 10 writers were recruited to write up short pieces to be printed on the cups and bags to introduce people to their writing style. So, while the creative writing campaign seems to be a great addition for cultivating thought, they still didn't feature a single Mexican-American or Latino writer in any of their writings, despite marketing themselves as a Mexican grill. Despite this, Chipotle stated that they reached out to around 50 writers, some of them Latinos, but that they chose not to participate. Sixth place. Their ingredients aren't healthy. Surprised about this one? Despite some of their ingredients being legitimately organic and healthy, their comprehensive list of ingredients has revealed that their tortillas and chips are made with genetically modified corn and soybean oil, on top of also using hydrogenated oils. That translates into trans fats, which, as you probably know, are not at all good for your health. They would try their best to remove these types of ingredients from their products, although there has been no further statement about this truth. Years ago, Steve Ells, the founder and CEO of Chipotle Mexican Grill. Seventh place. Their CEO didn't want to live off Chipotle. Steve Ells, one of Chipotle's CEOs, graduated from the Culinary Institute of America back in 1990 and began cooking at the Stars Restaurant in San Francisco before leaving to start his own business. To build up his cash flow, he had begun with the burrito business, and so Chipotle was born, although his dream was to begin a fine dining establishment. Fast forward a few years, and Chipotle is a worldwide Mexican grilled giant, and Els has an estimated net worth of around $200 million. We only have to wonder if his desired fine dining restaurant would have guarded him as much success as this. According to classic cooking techniques, and I learned, you know, how to create a, an environment. And so Eighth place, McDonald's helped it grow, and then backed away. The first Chipotle restaurants were funded with the help of Steve Els' parents and family friends. Bob Ells had given his son $75,000 to kickstart the operation, and by 1996, Ells had raised an additional $1.3 million. Of course, they still required some type of investment, as that was still not enough to grow exponentially as they have today. McDonald's became a massive investor and helped them grow, although they took away their investing money and left Chipotle to fend for themselves. In the end, they would have had a huge return on investment if they had stayed, considering Chipotle's current success. Ninth place, food poisoning scandals are common there. In September of 2015, the company had its food poisoning scandal when restaurants in Minnesota were hit with a salmonella outbreak due to bad tomatoes. 43 restaurants closed shortly after, and that turned out to be a disaster for the company. However, while they have battled against this issue for years, there have been a lot of food contamination disasters every year since this incident. I'm so sorry. Get away from me! But here at Chipotle, we have strict rules and regulations. You got it? Tenth place. Their CEOs are rich, their employees are not. While we do have to give Chipotle credit for their no experience required job policy, which allows employees great opportunities for growth inside of the company, it was estimated that it would take more than a thousand years for an entry-level employee to earn what their co-CEO Steve Ells and Montgomery Morin earn in one year. Both have each made more than $100 million since 2011, and that was nearly 10 years ago. Just for comparison, Ells and Morin have both earned much more than CEOs of Ford, Boeing, and AT&T. When you put the salaries of a worldwide car company, a private jet company, and a telecommunication giant side by side with a Mexican grill, there's bound to be some kind of difference, although you wouldn't expect the grill's CEO salary to be higher than the other three. Did you expect all of that secret information about Chipotle? Turns out that most of us are not aware of these truths. Anyway, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to give us a like, share this video with friends, and also subscribe to Film Jumbo for more amazing content just like this. Thanks once more, and we will see you next time.